Well, good morning. It is the next morning after our road trip, and it's time to take a look at what all we rounded up. So, Jeep tracks. These are a Dominator track system from American Truck Track, um, or American Track Trucks. I can't remember which one. I'll look it up and put it right here. I'll put a link to them uh, below too, even though they don't pay me to or anything. But these are less than a year old, only have 500 miles on them, and they are the XL series track, which are a longer track from front to back to help spread the weight even bigger, and they have more bogey wheels in them. And this particular set has, a, they're not the full on HD series that can go on something like that, but they are upgraded series where they have a different shaft or size bogey wheel or whatever. I'm not sure I have to look it up, but they're, they're tougher than the normal ones. So, uh, should be an awesome setup on that Jeep. And it's gonna, that'll pick it up quite a ways when it goes on these, which will help with the uh, ground clearance and should be pretty good in the snow. So I am super excited to run these. Like I said, these versus the Snowcat. Snowcat will go in deeper powder, go up a steeper hill, get farther out into the back country. But these will easily go anywhere someone with tires went to and got stuck and that's who i have to go get so in all reality i don't have to go any farther than the person who got stuck and that will get me there easier to transport easier to haul in the snowcat cheaper to run way more comfortable has a better heater and uh these i can drive down the road on um there uh i can drive down the road on these we can they're rated for 50 miles an hour which is flying on tracks, but supposedly they're rated for it. Um, but I can come out of the woods down into town. Uh, if there's a stretch of road, especially pavement between two different areas I need to get to doing multiple recoveries and anything like that, I can just drive these. Of course, you wouldn't want to make a regular habit of using them as like a daily driver down the road because you wear them down and they're not cheap to replace, but they can do it. The snowcat could, and you'd have to load it up, move it to the next spot, unload it, go again. Uh, I also now don't have to tow or haul my snow rig as far up the mountain. Um, with Snowcat, you pretty much had to haul it all the way to the deep, deep snow, which means behind that truck or whatever other truck, you've got a big trailer, something really heavy on it, and you're going through some bad icy mountain roads. And, I mean, doable, but this you can unload. Well, this you with these you can unload a whole lot lower down the mountain in much better conditions and just drive on up the road no problem so like i said as far as when you really get down to it this is going to be a better setup all the way around for what i am using them for let's go look at the trailer and here's the new trailer this is what we did not plan to buy uh until nine o'clock the night before i was supposed to leave to go to idaho my dad who happened to be in idaho visiting some family and for a hunting trip um Saw they had this sitting out back and asked them if they'd sell it. They said, yeah. So he texted me some pictures and I said, I'll take it. And I didn't know anything about it. I'd never heard of the Big Bubba's brand trailer before, but they're all the same. Um, it has dual jacks. Uh, the chain box is actually full of chains and binders and straps. They need some, it's probably loud. They need some cleaning up, but they're there. It is a 14,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating trailer um, it is a 20 plus 5 which means it's got 20 feet of flat deck and then 5 feet of beaver tail on the end when I was originally looking for a trailer I was looking for a 25 plus 5 and sorry about all the noise over there but Grumpy is playing Spider-Man on the ladder uh, turning one of our old horse barns into a gym for my wife so air compressor nail gun stuff but anyway I was originally looking for a 25 plus five, so I had 25 feet of flat deck. And I didn't even know this trailer did until uh, after I yanked it out of the bushes there is, most trailers have what they call the monster ramps or the mega ramps or whatever else they call them, it doesn't matter, they're all the same. The ramps flip over and then when they're up like this, they make that level deck and then you have your full length deck. The problem with that, well, they flip back over to make your ramp, you know. The problem with that is 
you drive a long vehicle up on there, you can't flip the ramps back over and put them away. So you have to lock them straight up and down. But now you're limited if you got something that's going to overhang because the ramp's in the way. And you can't leave them tilted back because when the bottom of that ramp hits the ground, this trailer, the actual beaver tail itself is in two pieces and raises to make one big flat deck or lowers to make a dovetail. And then the ramps themselves are actually in the center and they pull out. So the snowcat, for example, even though it doesn't matter anymore, the snowcat was 22 feet long from the front of the blade to the back of the tracks. That's 20 feet of flat deck. If this was to flip over ramp style, the back of the tracks would hang two feet off over this ramped part, just kind of in the air, which is hard on the bogey wheels that would be sitting on right in the corner. And then you couldn't flip the ramps all the way over. You'd have to pin them straight up and down. And then what would suck about that is you have a trailer that can be flat deck so that snowcat would sit dead flat. But if you flip the ramps over, now you don't have the ramps to load the snowcat on. This one that does this deal with the pullout ramps, you can pull out the ramps and put them up to the high flat deck if you've got one long thing that needs to drive up there. Or if it doesn't matter, like on something with wheels or a vehicle, you can have it down and put the ramps down here. Very cool setup that I didn't even know it did. So that was super, super handy to find out. It needs new deck boards. It needs all new tires. I'm probably just going to buy all new tires and wheels for it. A couple little light issues, but that's all easy stuff. Has a, a worn winch already on it. Of course, the battery's shot, but a worn winch on it up there. Um, it's a torsion axle suspension. Uh, just a really, really nice trailer. It's a 2007, I believe, and they bought it, used it for a couple, two, three years, and they then no longer had a need for it and it's set out back in the weeds ever since until a couple days ago when my dad and I drug it out so this is going to do very very well I'm very happy with it it should be should be a good trailer let me do a whole bunch more stuff than what I've been doing so there's the trailer uh next time you see me I will be in the shop and I got a major project going on down there so Grumpy is just going to town on top of being an expert in everything else he does, and a historian, and a locksmith, and all that, he's a carpenter too, and a contractor, and he's just a jack of all trades, and like master of all of them. So, anyway, uh, this is it for me out here with the updates on what I bought. Next time you see me, we'll be in the shop, and there's a big project going on in there. And now we're in the shop, and we have a huge mess going on. We've got the new truck all ripped apart. Uh, we are doing some frame reinforcement on it. Uh, I have everything out <laughs> at once because I need all of it and I don't have room for it. Um, this room right here in this shop, the shop would actually be decent size for like a little one man operation if that room wasn't there. Uh, the previous owners built it as like a tack room in here and it just kills your workspace. So the plan is I'm going to rip that whole thing down and out of there and then reorganize this whole shop and actually make it like easily workable this will be my whole welding fabrication area over here these shelves will get out of the way and go over there so that i can back a vehicle all the way in here have all my room to work all the welding equipment can be not in the middle of the shop as it is now and then i'd also be able to pull a vehicle all the way in before i run out of room because that would be just super handy so we've got uh, the plasma cutter going down there. We've got the bandsaw cutting up our steel. Big chop saw cutting up our template steel. Uh, everything's out. The torch, the welder, even a jack. But uh, these are going to be the new frame rail reinforcement. That's two and a half inch by three quarter inch flat bar that's going to run down the frame of this truck from the very back of the wheel lift mounts at the back of the frame all the way into the front suspension mounts of the truck so everything will be braced all the way through uh, right now it just goes right up into basically the the gooseneck hitch mount in there and tries to kind of use that as the reinforcement which is stupid so totally redoing it this is one rail i'm currently cutting up as you can see here the other rail and uh, then i'm Grinding down the whole bottom of the frame, so we got something nice and good to weld to. We're going to use a, a dual shield uh, wire feed 
to weld that in there, that dual shield should burn right into this thick steel as well as the thinner frame, which is a big problem of welding what, probably eighth inch steel to three quarter inch steel, is trying to get it to burn into both without burning through one, and the dual shield should do a good job of that. Uh, if I run out of dual shield wire, before I get all that welding done, I'll have to switch to the TIG welder because that TIG welder will also stick weld and will run a 6010 rod, which is a really good rod for doing that same thing and burning into that painted, dirty, oily steel of the frame, which I'm grinding it all down clean, but it's still the contaminants are there. So that is what is going on in the shop. It's a huge mess. Hopefully one day I can get to that project and reorganize this whole thing because that would just make life way nicer. But this project is way more important because I spent a lot of money on this truck. I need it to be 100%. So working on this now uh, on top of all the other projects I have that you just saw outside, uh, we got all those to go through too. So just wanted to give you an update on what's going on here. I would like to film this whole thing and show you how to do a frame reinforcement in my opinion, I'm not like expert or anything, but um, I actually have to do the project and I'm here all by myself. So I kind of don't have much time to get this done. So you're just going to have to hopefully see it when I'm done and call that good enough. But uh, we're going to get this all prepped and done and we'll tack all this stuff into place. Then take the truck and the welder up to the house, uh, which is way up there to actually do all the finish welding because I don't have 220 power in the shop. I only have 110, which I do have the power running into the shop for 220, but this whole panel needs to be replaced. And I know enough about electricity to know that I should not be trying to replace this panel. So if anyone knows anyone or any of you guys in this area is good at electrical, um, let me know because I really need this redone, a 220 put in here. I have the power for it, I just don't have an outlet for it. And I pulled this cover off. It doesn't look good in there. It looks like it's been on fire a time or two. And it's probably not like super ideal that the, the water faucet and the electrical panel are side by side. So yeah, if anyone could help me out with that, that'd be super great. But I'm gonna get back to work on this, take it up to the house, do all the welding up there. The only problem with welding up there is, it means I gotta lay down in the dirt and do all my welding upside down laying in the dirt not on the concrete but no big deal I'm super dirty anyway so gonna get this done and we'll get back onto the trailer project the Jeep project um, and everything else we got going on so yeah here's the shop part of it let's get back outside and it is the next day uh, the frame reinforcement is done well stage one of frame reinforcement is done it is far more than adequate enough to tow anything I should be towing with this truck but I want to do more because I want it to be adequate to tow even things I shouldn't be towing with this truck. But uh, for now, uh, we're gonna move the Jeep out of the middle of the road real quick. I could jump start it, but why do that when I have a remote control and don't even have to get out of the seat. So um, we'll get this moved out of the way, then I'll show you what I got for frame reinforcement here, and we will go from there. Alright, we got the Jeep moved out of the way. Uh, 
I am going to fix it one of these days. I still haven't touched it since I jumped it at the sand dunes and broke it. See, it's still got the tow lights on back where I flat towed it home. Uh, oh, actually, I did fix the sway bar link, so I did touch it, but still waiting on the radiator to show up. Got new headlights and headlight housings for it, and uh, obviously got tracks for it. So we're going to get on that soon and probably add some more lighting to it as well. Uh, but for now, this thing, uh, we got the frame reinforcement done, and by we, I mean me all in one day. So what I did is this wheel lift, these pickup add-on wheel lifts, they have basically their own little subframe back here. And I used, this is a three quarter inch thick by two and a half inch tall flat stock uh, with a two and a half inch wide by three eighths thick uh, flat stock to make one basically massive piece of angle that's not gonna move. And it goes from the subframe of this wheel lift, and it does it. I didn't plate the frame itself. This goes from the subframe of this wheel lift, flat, and then shoots down at a straight angle. It doesn't follow this curve of the frame because curves make it weak. So straight shot down under the truck, and then continues all the way up. It stops about a foot short of the front suspension. I wanted to go all the way to the front suspension, but. That's where I ran out of steel. So it stops on either side. I'm gonna add on to it once I get some more. But it, back up, back up. It goes from that mounted, hard mounted to that subframe of the wheel lift, shoots straight down to the bottom of the curve of the frame and then goes all the way up along it. And what that's gonna do is basically as this gets pried down on the back, instead of prying on the end of the frame here, that big old giant support that runs down under the truck is gonna act kind of like forklift forks and pull up on the front of it not prying down on the frame itself anywhere in here. There's a one splice right here in the frame and there's another splice right about there that's a really big weak spot. And this goes under, it's basically like a forklift gonna just pick up on the whole thing evenly all the way through. And how I got the idea for that, it's very different than how most people reinforce frames. Most people cut everything off, plate the whole frame rail itself, make it just stupid stiff, which a frame is designed to flex and move as you go down the road and have twist back and forth to it and all that. They're supposed to do that. Uh, by just plating the heck out of the frame, you're taking all that away. So this is giving it all the support it needs without taking away the twisting that a frame should do. And this is not some giant genius idea that I came up with all on my own. I'll actually show you where I got the idea and how I know it's kind of a, a proven method. So this is my little tractor. Um, it, like most little farm tractors, did not come with a bucket on it. This is an add-on. And the problem tractors have, since they're, there is no frame, they're bolted together in the middle and the engine and transmission are basically the frame of a tractor. But since they're bolted together in the middle, uh, when you put a bucket on and it pries down on the front of the tractor, it tries to split that joint apart. and a lot of little tractors have broke those bolts right there and literally split in half. So this is basically the opposite of that wheel lift there. It's just off the front. It's putting the same forces on the frame, which is the engine and transmission housing. So what a lot of these have that strengthens them up is, yes, here's their little subframe where they mount, mount to the front, mount right here, and that would normally just twist down on this and pry back on it and put all the stress right here. So they have, coming off the bottom here, goes down, mounts to the bottom of it, runs all the way to the back to the back axle, which on my truck would be up to the front suspension mount. So as you lift with the bucket and it tries to pry down on the frame, which would try to bend this that way, that whole bar that goes all the way up there on either side takes all that force and is basically lifting straight up on the back of the tractor. So none of the force really goes through here because it's being cradled all the way back here. Just like my frame reinforcement goes from the back all the way into the front and is cradling it up there. So the one I did on there is much, much beefier than how this one is done on this tractor, you see it's on each side. But it's the same basic theory. 
it's been proven for decades in farm tractors of all sizes all over the world so why won't it work on a truck um, like I said that'll still allow it to twist and move and do all the stuff that a frame is supposed to do but should take away that bending force that happens to it when you load up the other end so I think that's gonna work good we will obviously see over time and if we break a frame we'll fix it so that is uh, it for this little update video uh, you're probably tired of update videos because when I watch update videos I hate update videos but I got a lot of updates so there you go uh, I think I'm gonna try to get back to work now because I haven't done that much of that lately because I've been too busy buying stuff and I probably should because I've been buying so much stuff so we're gonna that trucks all solid good to go now put it to work um, and uh, yeah we'll show you some of those videos next hopefully and That'll be it for this one. We'll see you guys next time.